Hello again, we've been looking at electricity, I've been going through some introductory topics and uh, currently we are going to look at uh, potential difference, okay, potential difference may also be called the voltage, the voltage, okay, the voltage, that's a different word for potential difference and the unit is measured in volts okay so that's where these two um, relate but what do we mean by the potential difference well you'll recall that in a previous video I explained how um, it is a lot like water that is flowing from a pipe and that that pipe is going from a higher position to a lower position so if I have my pipe here is my pipe okay then the velocity at which it flows eventually initially initial velocity is zero but later on the velocity in here is exactly the same everywhere and it's equal to the velocity um, that it would have in the end but that velocity comes from the fact that initially I've got mass times gravity times height potential energy and afterwards I've got kinetic energy so the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy which is a half mass times velocity squared and so so um, this value that and that will cancel okay so um, V will equal to the square root of 2gh okay kind of don't worry about this if you have no idea what I'm talking about it's not that important all I'm trying to show you is that the velocity the flow of the water flowing down this pipe um, has to do with the difference in energy at the top potential energy at the top and potential energy at the bottom okay so if if I still have some potential energy at the bottom okay this is initial and final then not all of this initial potential energy is converted to kinetic energy so it's all about the difference the change in um, in potential energy and that's where we come from if we are talking about um, this topic where we have now this time a, a circuit Okay, so here's my circuit. Okay, and in my circuit, I've got a supply of electrons. I've got a supply of electrons. This is where my electrons are being donated, and here is why, where my electrons are being received. And we said a good example is simply a battery okay simply a battery is just a good example of positive and negative side and now how will we measure the voltage well all, all of this is what is the potential at this space to provide electrons and the potential at um, the, the the potential of this side to actually um, I should put it the other way around what is the potential on this side to attract electrons attract electrons and what is the potential on this side to also attract electrons attract electrons okay to attract electrons if I have the potential to attract electrons and for those of you that's done chemistry that that is com uh, definitely related to your electron negativity electron negativity electron negativity talks about my ability to attract electrons and um, and you'll notice that fl uh, fluorine I think it's just F. Fluorine has the highest electronegativity. So if fluorine is somehow involved in this cell, in this battery, it will have the um, it will really have a high ability to attract electrons. Then on this side, I actually want a high ability to donate electrons, but we'll still measure it in in attracting it will just have a negative value which means I've got an ability to don uh, a higher ability to donate electrons nevertheless in the end I'm going to have two values here now again I'm not showing you this because it's important it just helps with the understanding why are we talking about the difference the potential difference it's exactly this what is the 
um, potential difference between the two ends of the source okay and that potential difference produces an energy okay now when it comes to voltage volts is measured as so one volt represents one joule per one coulomb okay we you might recall and hopefully you have had some mechanics and you know what we mean by joule joule is the measure of energy okay one joule means that one newton force is applied to move an object one meter okay that is times one meter okay one newton force is applied to move an object one meter and so um one newton net force by the way is applied to move a object one meter so um one volt represents one joule which is an ability it is a an energy per coulomb okay so if i were to measure um a voltage I am literally measuring the difference between energies at two points. So what I'll have to do is I'll measure, I'll have to take and measure voltage over two points, this point and that point. Now notice what I've done. So here I put in what we call a voltmeter, a voltmeter, and this is such a boring lesson because I'm sticking to two colors okay but what a voltmeter meter does is it it measures the difference in energies over two points now notice now what's what's happening here is we have because this will also be conductive material this will also be a conductive material so notice what's going to happen to the current as electrons are being supplied in this direction at this point they'll have the opportunity to be to um, switch paths they can either go in this direction or they can go in this direction okay so if you watch the previous video you'll know you'll remember that we said uh, that current can split now electrons will always choose the path of least resistance okay so if there is resistance in this path fewer electrons will come this side and more electrons will go to the other side now a voltmeter for that purpose is very high has very high resistance resistance okay it doesn't want to measure how many coulombs is passing per point remember we said one coulomb represents 6.241 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons or charges okay it doesn't want it it doesn't care how many passes through this point it just wants one coulomb to come in so all of the other coulombs can go past it just wants one coulomb to come in here because when that coulomb comes in it's going to measure how much energy does that one coulomb have and that coulomb can go back there and then complete his path while the rest of the of the um uh, uh, electrons will come in this way so it doesn't care as least as it gets some electrons to come in here it has the ability to measure their um, uh, their energy so what would come in is the voltmeter would therefore read the amount of energy that one coulomb of electrons will have so remember we said a coulomb is a collective noun for a number of electrons so we have i'm not going to draw all six comma two four one times 10 to the power of 18 electrons but i'm going to let this symbolize one coulomb it's a collective noun for a bunch of now it i really like to imagine it as a group of little men a, lo a little group of very excited little things now the more excited they are 
the more energy they have. Okay, so one Coulomb doesn't have a fixed amount of energy. They can have a lot of energy depending on the difference. How much do they want to leave here and get there? It's their desire. Uh, it, it's a nice way of thinking of it, but it's their desire to actually leave the um, leave home and go wherever the next posse is they're going to fix themselves okay so um, I hope that m gives you a little bit an understanding of of what voltage is it v uh, one volt tells me that one coulomb will have one joule of energy or we'll have one joule of energy per coulomb per little group of electrons that's how much energy they will have okay so here is now an important thing notice notice where i'm measuring the energy i am measuring it if i measure it over these two points maybe let me just change the color to something you might be able to see if i measure it between these two points then I'm literally catching the the group of electrons, the Coulomb, just as it comes out. So this is the absolute maximum energy that one Coulomb can have. But if there was something in between here, and we would call those resistors, and resistors have this this symbol. Let me just change my uh, this symbol in a in a circuit diagram that I'm using here. And let's say we've got we've got uh, a parallel circuit here with two more resistors okay so there's two more resistors so um notice what's going to happen when I get to a resistor the moment I get to a resistor, the resistor is going to drain energy. Okay, so when I measure energy at this point, in other words, if I put a voltmeter up here, there's my voltmeter up here, I am going to have a different reading on here than I did at that point. Because um, at this point, between this point and that point, some energy was expended. Okay, energy was used as all of the. Remember, all of the the electrons are going to pass through this point. There's no other route that they can follow. Okay, so all of the electrons are going to pass through here. So all of them have to give a little bit of their energy for this resistor. This resistor is going to convert that energy into something else. So that at these two points the energy that I have here and there would be different. Okay, but when I get here, okay, what, whatever the, so let's say my energy level is Y at this point or let's say X. At this point I come in with X and I leave with Y. Now, every electron that gets here, or let's rather say every Coulomb, every Coulomb that gets here has the same amount of energy it's got at this point, before the split. Notice I've, I've got two directions I can go in, into. Um, <laughs> and again, I choose terrible colors to work with, but I've got two directions to go in. Okay, but it doesn't matter which direction I'm choosing, some of the Coulombs will go in this direction, some of the Coulombs will go in that direction. Um, it all depends on which is the easiest path to follow. More will go um, in the easier that direction than the, um, uh, the more difficult direction. It's just like life. More people choose the easy way out than people that choose the hard way. But some does choose the hard way. It works the same way. But every Coulomb of electrons that go here have the same number of um, uh, has the same amount of energy because at this point every coulomb that comes here has the same energy so if we've got two co coulombs one goes in this direction one goes in that direction yes the if both of those coulombs got to this point at the same time then my current is two coulomb per second Okay, 
and now they split up let's say it's the same resistance in both sides now I will have one coulomb per second and one coulomb per second so yes the current splits up in two but each of those coulombs still have the same amount of energy they had before they split up okay it's like having money if I've got two um, two wallets at this point both of those wallets have the same amount of money in it yes my uh, in total I might have more energy and when I but I'm not measuring the total energy I'm measuring the energy per wallet the money per wallet the coulomb per, uh, sorry the joules per charge so if it splits up in two I will still have each coulomb will have the same amount of energy than it had before the split now it won't have the same amount of energy it had before the resistor the resistor is what reduces the energy not the split okay so as it splits up here now if I measure the voltage here in other words I'm measuring how much energy a coulomb has when he comes in compared to how much it has when it goes out I measure the potential difference over both of these the potential difference will be exactly the same because at the split they have the same amount of energy okay um now i i do apologize my sketch is really rough at this point but uh what i do need you to notice is something interesting now is that my voltage in this parallel you'll see this is again parallel means my current splits here I had a split in my current going in two directions but the voltage did not change because voltage measured simply how much energy does each coulomb have and at the split um, we just have different number of coulombs coming past but not the energy didn't change per coulomb so the voltage in parallel is still these two are equal okay but the voltage that I read here and the voltage that I read there is different for a simple reason that when the coulomb came to the first resistor it had to spend some energy when it came to to at this point it had the same amount of energy when it came to these two points it also spent the energy with the aim that by the time it gets to the end it should have spent all the energy in other words when they get here when we get when we've finished spending our energy we should have no energy left my energy should be zero I should have spent all my energy so um, and I don't know how electrons do it's not like they can do the calculation but it works like that that when the coulomb comes to the first resistor it will expend um, and, and that's what we're going to look at in Ohm's law it will know how much electricity to spend here so that it will have um, enough electricity left to spend at this it's not like this resistor tells it how much it wants it actually splits its um, its energy in into a ratio that makes sense based on the uh, value of the resistor we'll look at that don't worry about that later but my point being is that the total energy that each um, coulomb will have is represented by the voltmeter um, that measures between when it leaves the battery and when it gets back to the battery assuming that it spent all of its energy at that point that will be the total energy that every coulomb has these values will just tell you how much did they spend at each resistor so that if we call if I call this voltmeter 1 voltmeter 2 and voltmeter 3 okay and this voltmeter T okay for total then you should notice that voltmeter T will be equal to all the voltmeters that are in series so um, what I also just want to show you here or, or actually let me finish my explanation it will be equal to voltmeter 1 plus voltmeter 2 not also plus voltmeter 3 because um, of what I wanted to explain just now but because voltmeter 2 and voltmeter 3 will have the same reading reading um, in other words if I were to take and I don't have space here if I were to take a voltmeter between this point and that point here a voltmeter here remember I'm measuring 
the energy that a coulomb has at that point. It is the same as the energy that the coulomb has as it's passing through this resistor and the same as a coulomb has as it's passing through this resistor. So if I call this rather voltmeter 2 and this one would be 2.1 and 2.2 2 maybe that's maybe a better way of numbering these voltmeters but this is voltmeter 2 which would measure it over those whole parallel branches or all these parallel branches and this voltmeter 2 will have the same reading as that one that one will have the same reading as that one so these two um, these two voltmeter 1 and voltmeter 2 represent the total voltage in the system because they cover all of the resistors in the system all of the places where i will spend my energy okay i don't know how to explain that better but basically what i am saying is if i was uh, measuring the volts over every resistor in series and i add them all up okay so in other words i'm ignoring the branches and so when I get to a branch, I'm ignoring that it is a branch. I'd rather just take the voltmeter over all of it. And I and if there was another volt uh, resistor here and I measured the voltage over here, okay, all of these together will give me the total volts. Okay, that's an important property. And so let me just summarize that um, that we now have two options and two things we can read. We can read the current. and the voltage 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 in series and in parallel and in parallel and we notice that s parallel means my current splits up so the total current the total current is current re is represented by i uh, i never men mentioned that in the current video but current is measured in i um, and that will be the current of the one parallel branch plus the current of the other parallel branch plus the current of more parallel branches all of the parallel branches together gives me the total current okay voltage however the the voltage in each branch would just be the same voltage in parallel branches would all be the same okay while in series the opposite is true in series the current no matter where i measure in in this system it doesn't matter where i measure as long as i'm measuring in um if i'm measuring here or here as long as i'm not measuring inside the parallel uh, branches wherever i measure current they will have the same reading okay so current in series will everywhere be the same while voltage on the other end look how at different places this voltmeter that I measured here is different than the voltmeter reading here is different than the voltmeter reading here but the point being if I add all of them together I will get the voltmeter over the battery which is also called the EMF which stands for so voltmeter 1 plus voltmeter 2 plus voltmeter 3 you see it's completely the opposite 3 plus etc will equal the EMF which stands for electromotive electromotive force okay referring to electrons motion the force that they have um, uh, to apply thank you very much for watching this is a long video i do apologize for that but especially i do apologize for my whack diagram going on here but hopefully you were able to follow it uh, thank you and we'll see you in the next video